Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Magdalena. Hello, Dr. Anna. So you guys, I apologize for the confusion that we had with um, the timing and all that. But um, anyway, there's going to be a recording. So whatever happens, uh, you're going to be able to watch this. And we're here today to talk about the stuff down there. And um, I will say that in our social media posts, there is, uh, you know, there was like a use, we use, um, we used um, vagina, so, and just to just to be cor you know politically correct and physiologically correct, it's not really the vagina, even though you have the vagina monologues and and all of that good stuff. that kind of started the conversation around it. So it's technically not the vagina we're going to be talking about. It's more the other parts, vulva and and such. So clitoris, Dr. Anna. Mm -hmm. Dr. Anna, welcome. So good Thank to you. see you. It's uh, good to be here with you. Our community loves you and loves your products. So we're talking, you guys, about, um, I think one of the biggest problems, like when we when we did a survey on, like, what's the biggest issue that you're dealing with? Like, ever since you entered perimenopause, menopause, you're, like, hitting out 46, 45, 45, 46 and above. Like, what's the biggest pain? And actually, incontinence was the first thing that came up. And... Uh, and only then followed by abdominal, like belly fat, like a stubborn belly fat. So it's really fascinating. So Dr. Anna, why don't we just maybe start off with that first? Um, you are an OBGYN and that's something that I'm sure you've dealt with a lot. So why don't we just start off with that first? Like what's going on down there that ever since we hit 46, 45, like why do I keep saying 45, 40, 46, 45? Things start changing, not just incontinence, but a lot of other things starts happening. Like what's going on? Yeah, I, I definitely want to talk about it. And first, I, I want to say, you know, your email that went out, it was just brilliant. And you talk about, oops, I peed myself. Like how many times, how many of us does that happen to? Probably, you know, close to, if not 100% of us that will have an accidental leak. And the changes that are happening are, you know, you know, it's significant. It affects our quality of life. Like the, and what changes are happening is a great question. So when we're talking about down there, and oftentimes when we talk about menopause, we address vaginal dryness and we're, we're missing, we're missing a big part of our anatomy. So I just want to show you because like clitoris to anus, if we look at the top the, you know, like at the top fold, the clitoris, I love that um, in the South, I heard the expression one time, little man in a boat, and you'll never forget the clitoris again, if you just remember that visual, and the, the, the labia, and you have the opening to the urethra, and then the vaginal opening, the anal opening, and this band here is the perineum. So just to be really clear, now as we end the vaginal tissue inside the vagina, um, as we age, we lose the hor the hormonal, um, Oh, your flowers fell. Oh, oh, is there oh. water in them? Yeah, no, <laughs> okay. Okay. They, they are fake flowers. I'm going to put on my headset because I'm hearing that echo. We're hearing you. Okay. Though just, just okay. FYI, but I, I know you just may maybe do it for yourself. Okay. Very good. And and you okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So as our hormones change. We have that, you know, we, we feel the effect of dryness, the loss of strength to the pelvic floor, the incontinence, the leaking, and the loss of, you know, sensual pleasure, the more difficult to become aroused or have an orgasm, all of those are possible. So the hormones affect the pelvic floor, just like they affect our muscles or tricep muscles, you know, the underarm area, the muscles and tone and definition in our body. And we have to work harder to keep it. It's true. And I always like to say it takes more than hormones that, you know, to have, fix our hormones, but the changes, Magdalena, the loss in progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, and estrogen affect the integrity, the strength, the elasticity, and the moisture, the glandular production of secretions in the pelvic floor. So we experience, we experience some like, unwelcome changes. One of the things that, um, you know, I did a lot of research when we were launching our perimenopause quiz, just to help women discern and get out of denial the way I was in denial that I was actually like seriously deep into perimenopause. 
Um, and, and so we created a quiz and, and I did, and it's a very comprehensive quiz on perimenopause. And so for those of you who want to take it, it's on hormonesbalance.com. Um, just go there and then you see a perimenopause quiz on the homepage. But, you know, one of the things that was a real aha moment for me was how the drop of estrogen and testosterone also affect the, micro, the, the microbiome of, of that area down there too, which can then translate to all sorts of different infections that can also happen. And so suddenly women having like BV or having, you know, um, UTIs, Mm -hmm. Something that like, they are like, I don't have any, my sex partner is the same. We don't have any more or less sex. Like I have not been using a different washing detergent to create irritation down there. Right. Like nothing else is different in my life. The only thing is different that I've entered perimenopause and menopause. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that you see that often as well? Often. Yes, very often. The uh, urinary tract infections that cause individuals to be on antibiotics regularly. In fact, in just uh, this afternoon and Girlfriend Doctor Club call, a client that was on with us, she was 75 years old. She um, it said that she's had urinary tract infection again and again and again. And what can, what can be done about it besides antibiotics? And I get that question from 40, 50, 60 and above. Yeah. And because the hormones affect the strength of the urethra, the opening and closing, having sex or just bacteria can enter the bladder more frequently that way. So there's a few things. Number one, pelvic, I call them pelvic crunches, pelvic floor exercises, Kegel exercises. It's the concept of doing the pelvic floor crunch the right way to really keep that tissue strong, you know, urethra, vaginal, anal tissue to really exercise that on a regular basis. And then adding, for me, it's using Jolva regularly every day on the, you know, clitoris to anus around the urethra, vaginal area, and to keep that tissue healthy and taking for urinary tract infection, you want to take vitamin C, 4,000, 2,000 to 4,000 I use every day. That will help the pH of the bladder, help keep away bacterial infections, and take a probiotic each day. The probiotic will help with the um, bladder health and the vaginal health. But also the reason to add the hormone back is to keep your pH nice and acidic in the vagina. Mm -hmm. The reason the vagina is acidic, it makes sense. I mean, that's an opening into our womb, into our peritoneum, right? From the vagina in through the cervix, into the uterus, and through the fallopian tubes, out into our peritoneum, into the abdomen. And so the role of the acidic vagina is to keep bacteria sperm away, right? That's the yeah. initial role. As we get older, more inclined to infections. And so... Again, it's important to keep that tissue healthy, to exercise it, to get good blood flow, and um, to use, for me, it's using Jolva, using DHEA and the plant stem cells in that combination to help a woman retain her, you know, um, natural moisture and, and the strength of the pelvic floor. Yeah, yeah. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about like, you know, so what's the difference between Jolva and for example, you know, est estriol or estradiol creams that uh, yeah. there's, I think that's the first, in, in fact, I think most of OBGYNs would recommend an estrogen cream or, you know, something like if you're having dryness down there would be like something with like a coconut oil. There's, there's quite a number of different products that are more of a lubricant. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about like, what's the difference between Jolva and products? as Yeah. Companies? Yeah, and it's a great question, Magdalena, because estrogen works, and it's the most common thing people are, you know, like physicians have been trained, because that's all we had for so many years, was just vaginal estrogen. That's all we were told, you know, hey, we, this might help. But there's a couple things. Number one, if you're going to use something vaginally, it's got to be clean, it's got to be free of phthalates, free of you know, parabens, three of, free of fragrances mineral, and chemicals. Mineral oils. Yeah, petroleum, um, <laughs> artificial sweeteners. I mean, aspartame are in some lubricants. Anyway, no, but we'll get started on that one. So it's got to be clean, but even prescription, you know, vag estrogen vaginal gels and creams have a lot of chemicals in them that you don't want in your body. It can cause, you know, harm to your tissues too. So 
and estrogen only works on the mucosal layer. So when I say mucosal layer, like the first layer inside your mouth is the mucosa, the mucosa of your mouth. Same with the vagina, it's a mucosal moist layer. And estrogen only works on the mucosal layer. It doesn't work down to the connective tissue and to the muscle tissue. Mm. Androgens do. So a pro-androgen DHEA, which further converts to testosterone and estrogen. And by the way, again, your email was brilliant. You explained this so well. So, you know, a DHA converts to testosterone and estrogen. It works on the deeper tissues and helps your body. I mean, it really is anti-aging. It reverses the hands of time and you see your body natural, naturally produce its um, moisture, its folds, its um, the bacterial, the increase in healthy bacterial in the vagina, all of that. Um, helps with the combination. Now the research, there's also prescription DHEA vaginal suppositories called Prasterone or Intrarosa. Intrarosa was approved a few years back. The research I've been following for over, you know, over a decade and a half, almost two decades by Dr. Ferdinand Labrie out of Montreal, uh, Canada. And looking at the safety profile of, of vaginal DHEA, to help women because it's so much better than estrogen by itself. And it's very, very safe. In, in breast cancer patients, DHEA can work mm -hmm. to decrease breast cancer risk. We know healthy levels of DHEA decrease breast cancer risk, et cetera. So the research has been out there for a long time. The product just was FDA approved. I think it was 2017. And, um, and of course, Joel Vibe had in, in the work since early, um, 20 teens. So the DHEA is so much better. And also because of vaginal suppositories only working on the vagina, clitoral issues, anus, anal fissures, hemorrhoids, we want to keep that tissue healthy too. Mm. So using, and, and that's why Jolva is, a, you know, designed to be topical. It's safe to be inserted vaginally, but we want to keep all that tissue healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and so for those of you who, um, have not seen the email perhaps is I, I wrote an email and this is like, I didn't make up that story. I mean, this is truly about six months ago. I, uh, you guys may see that from social media. Like I love doing, I love doing uh, weight training and I actually just finished the weight training session that I had a quick shower and then jumped on a call with Dr. Anna and you guys, and, um, and so six months ago, I thought, you know, it'd be really nice to kind of, as a warm up, do a little bit of cardio as well. So I started skipping and skipping is such a wonderful, like a quick, you know, thing of, of just getting your cardio up and going, your heart up and going and warming up the whole body is great for the upper body, right? So, and, um, and I peed myself and I thought it's going to stop, but it didn't. And it kept going. And I was at home. So I, you know, I took the liberty of just keep going thinking like, it's going to stop. It has to stop. Like, and I will be clenching my, you know, everything down there, all the muscles, and it wasn't helping. And so this was like my awakening of entering, like truly acknowledging to myself that I am actually in perimenopause. Because initially, you know, what happens with a lot of women is our periods start changing because our ovaries are beginning to, to slowly start shutting down. And so, you know, you're just not producing the same amount of estrogen, progesterone. And so our periods a lot of times become shorter and then become much, so it's like 21 days. And then a lot of times then becomes like 40 days, 60 days. Like, in fact, right now, um, every three months I get my period. Right. And so, you know, but, but I was still in denial about that. I will totally admit this. And I was like, no, it's not until the peeing started, the, the incontinence started. And so, you know, your cream made a huge difference. I, I also acknowledge, I will acknowledge that I was doing other things as well, just to up my estrogen naturally through things like flaxseed and, um, and I did a couple of herbs um, from our products, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's really like really within about 10 days of using that combo of things, um, that I went back to skipping and I wasn't urinating anymore. So involuntarily, um, and awesome. so that, was, that was huge. It was very empowering. And, and I'm glad that it happened at home, right? Because I can just keep going and, you know, and it doesn't really matter. Um, it's a different story when, when you're in a gym, but it's also for those of you who, you know, you can relate to this. And by the way, the question for you guys who are listening live to this, what is like this biggest symptom for you that was like a big flag of going like, welcome to perimenopause, like, welcome, like what was that flag for you? 
so for me, it was my period and then incontinence was like the biggest two welcome symptoms uh, for sure. So, um, mm -hmm. so, so we have some questions about dual bus. So just hang in there and we'll, we'll talk about this, but can you just talk a little bit about how did you formulate it? What's in here? And by the way, you guys, the it's in the email. Um, Dr. Anna is giving away the free the sample. That's completely free. It's seven days supply in here. So try the sample first before you full, buy the full product. The full product is here. Um, you know, we always unless you know the product, you know, you love it, then take advantage of it. But otherwise, I would want to recommend getting the sample first. Try it out. All the instructions are in here. You just pay for shipping and handling. And um, and the rest is free. And so I'm just going to post the link to where to get the sample free from Dr. Anna. We get to your questions in just a second. Can you just talk a little bit about what's in here and, and yes. how did you formulate it? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. I also want to say, you know, so that, you know, free trial for under $5, you get the experience Jelva for seven days. And oftentimes people will feel a difference within a couple of days. They really will. But the long haul being consistent, using it regularly, you will feel a difference. Now, when you do get and the- I just to tell you, I've also, because you told me to use it for my hemorrhoids. I started having yeah. hemorrhoids. I've always had issues with constipation my whole life. And I got it largely under control, but I think as a tissue, everything was just getting softer down there not just incontinence, but I started getting hemorrhoids and I started using Jova for hemorrhoids as well. And that helped tremendously too. So just thank FYI. you. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot as well. And so that's, it's, I mean, again, no one talks about this, right? Your gynecologist isn't telling you, well, I, I see hemorrhoids or fissures or, you know, clitoral atrophy or the vulva. I mean, kind of like look for yourself, get a mirror and look what's happening down there. Start using Jolva. You'll start to notice your natural secretions. You'll start to notice a decrease in the odor if you're neck recognizing a fishy odor, especially after sex. I mean, your body will be empowered. And I'll tell you about the ingredients in a second. And I just wanted to mention that, you know, you're not alone with these symptoms. And also when you get the trial, you guys get it, you know, give that link, share that link with your friends. You'll also be offered, of course, a full day tube at a significant discount, 100% money back guarantee, you guys always 100% 60 day money back guarantee with us. So you can use it, try it really experience the good benefit of it and see for yourself. And um, risk free, really risk free. So the reason I combine, first of all, a vulvar cosmetic, the first vulvar cosmetic, I will have to say, there was not no, you know, like, I was, you know, struggling with helping my patients. And I started using vaginal hormones and vulvar hormones. And I always say, you don't, you know, if it doesn't bring you pleasure, don't put it in the vagina. All these suppositories, tablets, gels, creams, you know, lot, you know, et cetera, especially suppositories. I mean, in Georgia, they melt by the time you get home and let alone in Texas and they make a mess. And um, so I wanted something that people could use externally that worked as well as if you needed to use it internally, you can still use it internally, but it is um, designed for external. And plus the clitoris to anus, keeping that tissue healthy, the urethra, bladder control, sensitivity, and of course, hemorrhoids and anal fissures, which are terrible if you've ever experienced that. And I had four big babies. I know what that's like. I haven't suffered from one in 15 years now. And incontinence too, same story in my thirties doing a, a P90X workout. If you guys remember P90. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I like totally was in light gray. I was in a gym. I was not at home. I was in a gym. I was one of three women, you know, at the lunch break exercise with maybe 15 guys. I'm in light gray leggings and I totally peed all over myself. There was no hiding it. I was terribly embarrassed. I was like, you know, good. I was in the back of the room, but I still like, I don't even want to know who noticed. And, um, and so it was like, that's using, you know, vulvar vaginal hormones for myself, as well as my patient, I started getting really good at prescribing, you know, a customizing compounded formulas for my patients preoperative for a bladder sling procedure, for instance. So for example, if you have incontinence, we do a sling procedure and we tighten up the area under the urethra, the bladder neck to um, keep that healthy. But the tissue as we get older thins out and then it can break down with a foreign, you know, with the foreign mesh in there. And you'd hear heard all over the place, the mesh erosions, et cetera. Thank God I didn't have any, but I started using vaginal hormones for my patients. And 
so I'd have good tissue to to work with during surgery. And as I got and I started doing it pre-op, like two weeks, one month, two months pre-op. And by the time my patients came in for their um, surgery, they were like, Dr. Anna, I'm not having any more leaking. I ran for five miles, I'm not wearing a panty liner anymore. I'm like, you know, I, I don't have to do surgery in that case. So that's how, that's how important it is to use these hormones. Estrogen doesn't do that. Estrogen doesn't do that. And so when I retired my practice, my patients were like, Dr. Anna, no one will give us your compounded creams. And, and so I, you know, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to create something. Like I made a commitment to my patients and to myself that I would create something that you don't need a prescription for that works even better than anything I could prescribe. And so that's how I, I researched stem cells, plant stem cells and the Alpine rose is this beautiful rose that grows in the Swiss Alps amongst the harsh conditions of the rocky terrain and the harsh weather, the ice and snow. And I'm like, that exemplifies yeah. femininity post you know, post 50 in our second spring of life. And it does and smell of rose, got the very, very subtle, gentle rose smells. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And it, and it's been shown to be, um, to improve collagen it's in high end cosmetics and it really does help, you know, re, um, uh, support, regrow your collagen and then improve that connective tissue and decrease those fine lines and wrinkles. And it's also has antiviral properties, which is important for down there. And so, um, so then I, you know, the DHEA was a given over the counter in the U S guys in Canada, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you know, yeah. someone in the U S that's how we get it to you. But otherwise, it's only uh, prescription. DHEA is only intra, you can get intra rosa in Canada by prescription. But um, so DHEA, again, for years, I've been using it. And since 1999, I've been using it bulb on, on the vulva and vaginal area. And the safety profile and the research and following that research, yes, even in my patients with breast cancer, I wanted something safe for them. And also, again, not to increase any risk for my patients. Yeah. So DHEA, and it at the intrinsic level, at the cellular level, it converts to testosterone and estrogen. And that helps with the connective tissue and the moisture within the vagina. And you, you know, you just see for yourself. So, and then the coconut oil, the shea butter, and the emu oil to help those ingredients really penetrate the tissue and feel good instantly when you use it. But long term, I have a 65 year old patient. She goes, I've got the vagina of a 25 year old. Another patient wrote in our um, customer service. Uh, um, reviews the other day, she says, you know, I went to the gynecologist and she said that my vagina is, is 20 years younger than I am. <laughs> yeah. And so like, and that's important because that is a quality of life factor today, you know, in that call 75 year old, she'd um, been widowed after, you know, and, and their um, sex life had dropped, you know, had um, uh, been very rare for the last 15 years, 10 or 15 years of, of, her partner, her husband's life. And so she's been using Jolva regularly and she's met a new love of her life and is so excited to, you know, to be able to experience a better than ever sex life. It's never too late. It's never too late. And I, yeah. and I really want to emphasize that. Yeah. Awesome. So um, let's dive into questions. We have quite a number of questions that came in um, where, what I want to, I want to kind of profess it by, um, cause I think that's going to take care of a lot of questions that are coming in. Um, including one from Ailish, what would you recommend for someone with hormone positive breast cancer? Just to clarify the DHEA that might later gets turned into estrogen, um, estrogens, is that going systemic or is this just working on, um, the lo topically locally? Yeah. We just see it in the local tissue. We don't see it. So oral DHEA, you know, I mean, you would want to discuss your, with your doctor, but we have definitely talked with whatever condition you're dealing with. When you have an estrogen positive breast cancer, are you being treated by, you know, Femara or tamoxifen and, you know, and talk to your 
oncologist if this is approved. I have oncologists from MD Anderson that recommend Jolva, oncologist Texas Oncology in cancer patients that recommend Jolva and are fine with us using DHEA, testosterone, even vaginal estrogen. So you do want to communicate that with your oncologist, but the research in DHEA and breast cancer, and there is, you can just Google that on my site, DHEA and breast cancer, and you'll see a lot of safety profiles with it. So we know the healthier, you know, and better your DHEA level is, and your vitamin D level, by the way, the lower your risk of, of cancer and recurrent cancer, as well as other lifestyle things to make your body resilient so and resistant, inhospitable to cancer. That's where we want you to be. So this is one way to keep keep you healthy during the process. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then uh, we have a question from Mandy. Can Jova cause hair loss uh, like some DHEA supplements can? No. Mm -mm. And sometimes oral DHEA and depends on the type, some worse than others. Um, will cause acne, breakouts, hair growth, but um, we don't see, no, because Jolva is topical. It's yeah. not being absorbed, taken systemically. You're not getting the metabolites of oral metabolism of DHEA. So we don't see that at all. Um, where can we get the samples, Beatrice? So I did post the, uh, the, uh, the link in the comments. So take a look at that one. Um, we have another question from Evelyn. Is your cream safe for someone who has endometrial cancer? If not, what would you suggest? And also alternative, please. I'm 73 and have lots of UTIs, many things. Yeah, absolutely safe. Not contraindicated in endometrial cancer. Uh, Marie saying in menopause for seven years, would Jova help? Very sensitive to meds. Does it have any side effects? Um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's never too, like I said, you know, clients in their seventies that start, I have someone in their eighties who's using it for the incontinence issue predominantly as well. And, um, yeah, so it can definitely have women postpartum and we actually, um, uh, donated a bunch of Jolva to a clinic in Arizona that worked with postpartum moms with female genital mutilation, where they have the female circumcision and the physicians were using it in those patients to get really good recovery postpartum too. So uh, a lot of good safety and efficacy with Jolva for a wide, wide range of reasons. Great. But if you're breastfeeding, I don't recommend using Jolva if you're, you know, you know, really like when you're breastfeeding to be as clean as possible. So that's where I would say, you know, the only one would use. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rhonda is asking, is it soy free and gluten free? Yes. Um, and then Beatrice is asking, if you're not in menopause, can you still use the sample? Yes. Um, can it help lichen scler sclerosis? So we can't say it's a cosmetic, so we can't treat a disease, but we have many clients and you can again, look at our, our um, reviews that have had a lichen sclerosis and they said it did help. I typically say with lichen sclerosis, start on the non-affected tissue. So the, the, the healthy skin and start every other day because Jolva is designed to work. It, you will see a difference. Longer, more regular use, you will notice a difference. And so um, start on the, you know, the healthy tissue and start every other day. And then in about a week or two weeks, you can apply it directly to that tissue and see how you feel. Oftentimes your physician may prescribe other, other creams, et cetera, that they want you to use. And you can use Jolva right alongside pretty much any of those creams, the steroid creams, et cetera. Okay. Just separate, like not the same time, but just mm -hmm. different time. Is it? Different time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rennie is just saying I live two miles away from your medical school. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> South Florida. Cool. So, um, yeah. So for those of you who are joining a little bit late, um, we've got the jet claim the, the sample, get the sample for free. That gives you seven days of usage and it's completely free. You only pay for shipping and handling, uh, depending on where you are and try this first. And so once you, if you like it, this is where you can later get the full jar, the bottle, um, and Dr. Anna has got a new branding on. So if you know her work from before, this product looked different before, but now it's got this beautiful 
um, crimson to it. And I also want to do a shout out for another product that you've created because you're so creative. Um, it's got a dual lip, dual, uh, lip duo where one is for the down there and the other one is for the lines right up here. <laughs> so a little DHEA. I will say, you know, I've, I've been testing some DHEA creams on my skin as well. And, um, and it's been like incredible, like how much skin improvement I've, I've gotten from it. So yeah, if you like you wearing a lipstick and then at the end of the day or two hours later, you got your lipstick all up the lines up there. Which, by the way, vertical lines on your lips above is typically a symptom of low testosterone, low estrogen. So just FYI, and you can fix that topically with the uh, yeah. Lip Duo. Yeah. Um, let's take one more question before we wrap up. Uh, yeah, and I just had a, yeah. with Lip Duo, you can see how it's designed in the box. So the upper lip, the lid is at the top and the Jolva is at the bottom. It's in like yeah. the 69 position. And we say we take care of your lips above and below your hips at the Girlfriend Doctor. So yeah. use Lip Duo like you would a chapstick. It's great. And it really does help those lipstick bleed lines, um, plumps up the, the lips and it's doing the same thing for down there. The lip uh, duo for a top, the kiss formula, it's more of an emollient. It's a really nice moisturizing emollient yeah. cream. Again, same thing. Initially you may feel some dryness first, just like if you were to do a new skincare regimen and you'll get a turnover of cells or you get that light exfoliation or peeling. You may experience that with your lips, you may not, but just know that it is completely working to regenerate healthy, healthy cell, healthy cells, healthy tissue. And yeah, nice applicator. I love this. I love the applicator. Um, it's just like, it's just so easy, nice. And you just put it like right above your lips. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm, I'm wearing a little bit of makeup. So, um, but I often do that before going to bed. Um, all right, let's do one more last question and then we'll wrap up. And uh, Rennie is saying, how about non-female cancers? colorectal melanoma, is it safe? Yeah, there's no contraindication. Definitely with any conditions that you've been diagnosed with, talk with your physician, talk with your oncologist. But in general, higher levels of DHEA are associated with lower levels of cancer. The same thing with vitamin D, high levels of vitamin D, lower incidence of cancer. So we want to look at too, in the case, like what caused the cancer to begin with, and address those issues. Things we know that can improve your risk for cancer is low hemoglobin A1C, low inflammatory markers, high DHEA, high vitamin D. All of those things improve your um, improve your pro. Again, and if you've been diagnosed with cancer, we want you to create a body inhospitable to cancer, and so that there's no secondary um, cancer, recurrent cancer. Uh, for those of you who are dealing also with estrogen dominance, uh, you know, and estrogenic cancers, it's also let's also not forget about one really super important organ that's your liver, because that's where estrogen is also get broken down, and so that's really one um, area to look into. And so, if you have my books, Overcoming Estrogen Dominance, it's a, there's a whole chapter dedicated just to how to support your liver so that you are breaking down estrogens correctly. Okay. Um, so good to have you here. Um, and um, thank you for making the time this evening. Uh, thank you so much, you guys, for being here today. Thank you for all your questions. I hope this is something that's helpful. I know this is one of the most embarrassing. It's not life-threatening. Here's the thing, right? It's not life-threatening. At the same time, it's like, you know, it just, the, the other part, I will say, like, it's, it's like that even moment of like standing with a bunch of girlfriends and having a really good laugh. And you just go, ha, 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 ha. And you go, oh, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, if you're wearing black pants, okay, okay, fine. But, you know, if you're wearing, like, like red pants or pink pants or whatever, like, I, Jeans, I mean, yeah. it's just, like, it's the most embarrassing moment of your life, right? And so, and it's the gym. And, it's the, and so many women have told us, it's like, I love doing rebounding because it's so great for my lymphatic system. And Magdalena talks about the lymphatics all the time. And, but I can't rebound because I leak, right? And so, so this is where I really want to help you with this. And this is, I think, Jolva is like really one of the easiest, easiest, fastest ways of um, and safe ways of correcting um, the incontinence, but also correcting all the all the other stuff, including bacterial infections. Like we had a couple of team members who entered perimenopause and suddenly got one got BV and the other one started getting recurring UTIs for no reason. 
And just correcting the hormonal balance down there topically has completely changed it for them. So I just really wish that this, I really hope that this is helpful information for you. Um, we always have, we have had Dr. Anna multiple times with us because our community loves her product. And so some of you might be new to this. Welcome. So some of you, you have seen this before. Welcome as well. And, um, and I hope the sample is going to be super helpful for you. Um, in, um, in really restoring the health and your own confidence, you know, and love for being a woman in your forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies and not despairing it. So oh, you say that so beautifully, Magdalena, and thanks for being brave and talking about this and bringing it to your audience too. I appreciate you appreciate all of you who've asked questions and that have showed up for yourself. That's amazing. So I thank you all for being here. I'm just going to put up Mandy's uh, comment before we hang up. Uh, she said, I started leaking urine at age 40 and had no idea it could be related to perimenopause. Great info. Thanks so much for saying that, Mandy. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Um, and um, we'll see you soon. I'm going to be back to doing lives on Thursdays starting next week, including live, live Q&As. I stopped for the summer just to, to have adventures in my camper van. And I'm back to Colorado, as you can see. The retro wall, typical in Colorado, mountain houses, and uh, we'll be doing live Q and A's and uh, various different topics to help you guys um, sail through the lovely um, time of perimenopause and menopause. All right, thank you, Dr. Anna, for being here with us tonight. Thanks, you, thanks you so much, you guys. Have a great evening, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.